but I need to say it again because I did go through a lot. When I was uh, about 17, I started having problems and I and my mom took me to the to the doctor and they had to do surgery on me and I had endometriosis and it was very serious. It was over 30 years ago, so now they have they do have treatment. But long story short, I had several surgeries and then had to have a uh, complete hysterectomy at 18. And all I ever wanted to do was be a mom. <laughs> all I ever wanted to do when I was little, I had my baby dolls. And, you know, it was uh, something really hard for me to overcome. And I, I raised my brothers and sisters, you know. I was the oldest. And uh, so I started feeling like, you know, that God really didn't, I mean, he just didn't care. Because he knew I wanted babies. And, you know, I was young already. And then young in the Lord, too. And so I couldn't see it back then. And, you know, even for years I prayed, you know, and I didn't understand. And I would ask God, why? You know, why? I don't understand. And it was hard. And then one day, <laughs> I met my husband and, uh, in church. And uh, it wasn't like it just happened easily. It was two years of it. But, uh, <laughs> he had two boys that he was raising. And uh, they were three and five. So they were little bitty boys and they needed a mama. And God just put me with Melvin and we just, everything just seemed to work out and I knew that they needed a mama and I needed them. And so we got married and, and that was good for a while and we did I did great and you know then we decided we wanted a little girl. And so, you know, we we didn't have money. So again, that I felt like this is, you know, as I'm gonna teach a little bit a lost cause. So I thought, you know, I'm never gonna be able to in the beginning I'm never gonna be able to have kids. No one's ever going to want me because they want kids, I'm sure. You know, when you're young, you think of all these things. But um, anyway, back to, to we were wanting a little girl, and so we didn't have money to go out and spend thousands of dollars on adoption. And, you know, I got discouraged again, and I thought, well, Lord, there's just no way. You know, we could, someone said foster care, and I said, we can't even do that. We don't have a lot of money. You know, we, you need a lot of money. And so I went up there and talked to him, and uh, I had a sister-in-law that was doing it as well. And so we had we took our classes and got all of our stuff done, and then we waited for over a year before anyone called us. And so during that time, I'm thinking, well, you know, I just don't understand again. But during this time, I look back and I can see it all falling into place because there was a little girl that really needed me. And uh, that was Brianna. And um, she was two. You know, bear with me. I got to raise her and many other beautiful, wonderful children. We've cared for probably 30 kids all of our, our married life. Brianna had a lot of health problems. And uh, she was so strong. And she made me strong. Yeah, she ended up back now with a liver transplant four years, four years ago, it'll be five years ago. And um, she had a little girl and a little boy, and they told her when she was a baby, she'll never even walk, let alone have children. And she, she did very well and was very sick most of her life still, but she was a trooper. Anyways, the Lord took her home about a year ago.
somehow or another. Well, God, God is good. He's a good God. So when we go through things that we don't understand, God has a plan and a promise. I wanted to say a few things about what I was going to talk about tonight. And I was going to talk about a lost cause. And I thought that Melvin and I usually refinish old furniture and, you know, take something that's old and just strip it down and try to bring the new back, you know. One of my favorite things is dumpster diving. <laughs> if we go buy something, I'll say, back up, go back. And he'll say, oh, no. I'll say, oh, yes, we can do something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but uh, let's see. Let me put my glasses back on. A lost cause is a person or thing that can no longer hope to succeed or be changed for the better. And I really believe there's nobody, nobody, let me get tissue. Excuse me, y'all. Some other words for lost causes, hopeless, beyond hope, failed, beyond remedy, not, not recognizable, a lost cause. And uh, I, was, I was thinking of different things today. Lots of things came to me <coughs> that I'd like to, uh, let's see. Well, first of all, I want you to imagine if you've ever been lost. I'm sure lot, most of you at one time or another have been lost. Mm -hmm. Lost in your, lost in your addiction, lost in your emotions. There's other ways to be lost than just lost. Um, one time the Lord gave me a thought and said, have you ever found yourself in the middle of nowhere? Mm -hmm. And say, how did I get here? Because that, that's happened. And I think that's where people, people, no one just wakes up and says, I think I'll get lost today. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And uh, sometimes we get lost when we're in the woods and get turned around. And sometimes uh, we get lost on the road because we've taken a wrong turn. And uh, I, I have a bad habit of, if there's a detour, I always get lost. I get turned around because I'm not in something familiar. And, you know, sometimes the Lord has us detour, sometimes Satan detours us. Mm -hmm. And it's so important that we, we recognize that. And I tell my kids all the time that, you know, God does open doors for us, but so does Satan. Mm -hmm. And we Absolutely. have to recognize those doors mm -hmm. and be be ready, you know, and recognize that's the first step to overcoming the devil is to recognize them. And the same with our problems that we have. Um, and it, I, what usually happens when you get lost, you get anxious, sometimes scared, panic, angry. Uh, we're not in control all of a sudden. You know, it's it's a scary feeling. And uh uh, let's see, and I, I was talking about the wrong turn, you know, you begin to tell yourself, I've wasted all this time on the wrong turn. Mm -hmm. What am I going to do now? I mean, I, you know, if I go back, what are they going to say? I worry about being, you know, I've been wasting my time. Uh, I read the, read the scripture in Matthew 10, 6. It said, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And we've heard lots of things about sheep. I'm sure you have. Y'all been in church very long. But uh, they have a tendency to wander and stray. And obviously because the Lord gives us the scripture that says that Jesus went after the, nine, the one and left the 99. Mm -hmm. And uh, whenever, you, whenever a sheep is lost, it gets disoriented, confused, not know its way back. It loses safety from the other flock. You know, that's the thing, the devil wants to get us off by ourselves and then make us feel hopeless yeah. and make us feel like there's no way to get back. Absolutely. And uh, so I, I love that. It, it brings that out about the sheep. And uh, there's, there's other stories in there, the prodigal son, of course. You know, uh, when he came back, uh, the father ran to meet him. Mm -hmm. He was waiting for him. And uh, the lost coin, the lady that lost her coin, I put in here and said there, were, there had to be work done. It was hard for her to find that. It didn't just happen. Obviously, it was a lost coin. But she went into her house and swept and cleaned and searched. You know, and sometimes we, what we think should be easy begins to be a little bit of a struggle. 
And we think, I know it's here. I had it. You know, I know I've got that strength. I've had it yesterday. Or I know I have the power. It's in me. God is with me. But sometimes we just don't feel it. And so we have to get down on our knees and start doing some searching. And that searching is, is prayer. And, you know, just putting yourself before the Lord and saying, God, I need you. Reveal these things to me. And God will start showing you. He'll, he'll lead you to the coin, I promise. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Good. Um, let's see. You know, it said, G, I wrote in for Luke 9, 10, and 10. Jesus is out there searching for the lost. He said, I've come to seek and save that which is lost. We're called to follow him there to the lost. He will find you there. There's hope. Mm -hmm. And a uh, couple more scriptures and then I'll be done. Uh, and I wrote put here something good to think about. What the world calls calls a lost cause, Jesus says, come unto me in Matthew 11 and 28. Amen. And he says, there is a place by me, Exodus 33 and 21. He says, cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. And that's Peter 5 and 7. Amen. And I thought that, you know, when we, this is the last thing I want to say, and I don't want you to ever forget this part. There's going to be people out there that sometimes get on our nerves. <laughs> they are people that, you know, have wronged us or, you know, left us. You know, people that have backstabbed us or, you know, whatever it is. There's always going to be those people. But we have to remember that that person that we're praying will go away and just get lost somewhere. Someone else is praying for that soul to be saved. Amen. And please just remember that if you take anything from this, because something that's helped me so much in, in my prayer for the lost is that God reminded me that I had lost children, and I still have children that are lost. And so, you know, if I'm praying for my kids, then somebody's praying for them. Amen. And I want to always remember that, because there is nobody that has no hope. If they're here, there is a cause. Yeah. And then there's, a, there's another scripture there that says there is a cause. You know, I love the Lord. I appreciate him. I thank y'all for letting me come up here and, and uh, give my testimony.